All right, we are on our next um, topic and module. Run module for topic one. Um, this is a very, very small topic. Um, we'll probably only have, um, it's actually only three lessons, but we'll probably be having four days worth of activities and then right into our, our summative quiz or test. So this very, very small. Um, Anyways, so the topic is is all real or is real the real number system. So we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, review and analyze numbers, things that we've heard before, but um, this is a necessary part before we move on to the rest of the curriculum. So we're gonna just start with number one on our warm up on page five fifteen. Um, we are trying to represent each number as a fraction, a decimal, and a percent. So this is already written as a percent. It's just five over eight. Um, so this, check, right, so it's a fraction. Typically, you would convert a fraction to a decimal, right? We could plug this into our calculator, five divided by eight, um, that looks like this, or we can, you know, let's do this freehand here, just so we can show that we don't need to rely on the calculator. Um, eight cannot go into five, so we'll put zero. And to continue this division algorithm, I'm gonna put decimals and include a zero here. 8 can go into 56 times, which is 48. And if you subtract, you'll get 2. Uh, let's continue this. Um, probably go to the thousands place. This will be 0 or 20. So 8 can go into 20 2 times. Right? 8 times 2 is 16. And then 20 minus 16 is 4. And then the last part here, if we bring down the 0, we can figure out how many times eight can go into 40? It is exactly five times. So uh, five eighths as a decimal is 0 0.625 or 625 thousandths. So we wrote it as a decimal. And then now we're gonna write it as a percent. That is where we take a decimal and move it two to the right. Uh, because technically what's happening is we're multiplying by 100 and that's what percent means. Percent means per hundred. Right, cent is 100 or 100th. So this is 62.5 uh, or 5 tenths percent. So we have fraction, decimal, and percent. All right, anyways. So you're welcome to try the other ones as you do. Um, but let's go and move on to the next page on getting started, page 516. Okay, we're just gonna give some examples here. <clears throat> right, so um, here, nothing too complex. Number one, uh, lists three numbers that are positive numbers. All right, it didn't say whole numbers, but right, one, two, and three. List three numbers that are between zero and one. Right, it might be a fraction or decimals. I'll put 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and 0 0.75. Give one example of a percent. Let's say 50%. One example of a fraction, one over two. An example of a mixed number, we could say one and three fourths, one and three quarters. Okay. All right, anyways, so that pretty fast. Um, you're welcome to give other examples if you like, but um, just to kind of re-familiarize ourselves with uh, vocabulary terms. Um, if we move on to f uh, 517, we're actually gonna, we're not gonna do this activity, but it would have us um, cut out 25 cards on another page and we would sort them and you would be welcome to sort them in any number of ways. We're gonna forego that, because uh, I think the major thing here is um, activity, re the rest of activity one. Okay, or two. So for this, um, we're just gonna go to number two, which is compare your groupings with your classmates, uh, create a list of different types of numbers you notice. So we're just gonna put the different types of groupings that you could probably group numbers, right? You can group them as positive, whole number, Ooh, whoops, not a comma there. Positive whole numbers. You can group them as negative whole numbers. Uh, you could also group them, right, which ones are, are fractions or ratios, or you can even group the ones that are, are let's say decimals, right? But there, there's other ways you can do it as well, right? Negative fractions, negative decimals. Um, and so on. Okay, so we're gonna move on to activity two. So 
for this, it is um, we're looking at groupings of numbers and, and what they, they have in, in common. So for this, it says, in this activity, you will analyze how other students group numbers and their rationale. And, and here for number one, it says Lauren grouped these numbers. As you can see, she grouped all of these numbers together. Why do you think Lauren put these numbers in the same group? Okay. <clears throat> right, so what do they have in common, right? Um, I see that some are positive and some are negative, so they're not grouped by sign. Um, it looks like none of these are whole numbers. So there's some type of decimal or fraction or, or part of, of a whole. Um, this actually turns out to be because all these numbers are um, repeating decimals. Right, so right, the ones that have a bar over it, those are obviously repeating, right? 0 0.91, uh, that's a repeating 91 hundredths. It would look like this. We would put in ellipses to just indicate that it continues forever. Um, negative two thirds. If you divide two by three, this would be negative. It would just be a repeating six. And if you were to divide this, this would also give you um, a, a non-terminating repeating decimal. Right, 100 divided by 11 would be uh, nine point zero nine zero nine, and it would continue that that pattern there, right? This is obviously repeating, right? It has it has the the pattern of a repeating two three, and then negative zero point bar three, that would be just negative point three 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 repeating. So these are all um, repeating decimals. Okay, <clears throat> all right. Let's go ahead and move on here. Um, number two. Zane and Tanya provided the same rationale for one of their groups of numbers. Um, however, the numbers in their groups were different. So how can I rewrite each number as a positive, as a positive integer? So for this, <clears throat> right, it, it, it may not be apparent that these are um, positive whole numbers, but um, this one right here, absolute value of negative three, right? Absolute value means how far it is, that number is from zero. So that is just three. Um, this is the square root of 100, right? The square root of 100 is 10, right? Then when you have a number that's in the square root, you ask yourself what times itself equals that number inside the square root. And it's 10, right? Because 10 times 10 equals 100, right? This is already a positive integer, positive integer, and this right here, absolute value of two is just two, okay? All right, anyways, so we, we wrote them all as positive numbers. Um, so in this case, uh, let's look at, oh, Tanya, Tanya grouped these, right? These are all positive, right? That's 10, these are positive integers, uh, but in this case, Tanya thinks that this is a positive integer. So 212%. Yeah, that itself is positive, but if you were to convert this, right, instead of a percent, convert it to a decimal. So that's where you take the decimal and, right, typically from decimal to percent, you move it two spaces to the left. Decimals right here, or sorry, two spaces to the right. If you go the other way, it will be two spaces to the left. So in this case, it is 2.12, right? And so with that, that tells us that that is not, they're not all positive whole numbers. So who is correct? It is Zane. So Zane is correct. Um, the difference is that Zane had this absolute value of negative three, uh, but it's because Tanya has, right, that percent of 212%. Right, absolute value of negative three is, is a positive whole number, whereas that is not. Right, and this equals 2.12. All right, um, let's go ahead and look at some other groupings. Moving on to the next page, page um, 519. All right, Tim grouped these numbers together. What do you think the group, uh, why did he group all these numbers together? All right, so I think it's important to all right, look at the varying groups that, that we wrote at the beginning, where we put positive whole numbers, negative whole numbers, decimals, fractions. So what do we think is happening with all of these? <clears throat> right, we've got 
This is a, a terminating decimal, right? It stops. This is a, a negative proper fraction. Um, this will repeat. Negative uh, square root of, of nine is negative, square root of nine is three, right? Because three times three is, is nine. And then we have a negative one and then a negative zero point of repeating three here, bar three. So what do they all have in common? Um, in this case, it, it doesn't really matter about the, like whether it's whole or part, all these numbers, they are negative numbers. Right, some are whole, some are complete, some are not, but that's the group that we have here. All right. <clears throat> and then number four, Isaac grouped all numbers between zero and one. Identify all the numbers that satisfy um, Isaac's reasoning. Okay. Identify all the numbers that satisfy Isaac's reasoning. So we can just create any numbers that are between zero and one. Some of it could be decimals where it's like apparent that it is between zero and one. So 0 0.25, where that's a terminating decimal. We could have this. Um bar 91, which is a repeating decimal. Let's have 0.5%. That's in between zero and one. If you move that decimal two to the left, it would be 0 0.005. And then let me give you like a, a, a kind of unusual one. Square root, we'll have a square root of a fraction. Okay. Let's say 9 16th. So, this is in between 0 and 1 because square root of 9 is 3, square root of 16 is 4 because 4 times 4 is 16, and 3 times 3 is 9, and 3 fourths is in between 0 and 1. So just, just some other examples there. Um, but let's move on to number 5. We have Leslie groups these numbers together. So what's so special about these numbers? Okay, so I'll give you an opportunity to try to figure that out. Um, what could Leslie name the group? So these are all mixed numbers where we have some type of, of whole and part, right? So like this one, we, we would typically write a, a whole, a mixed number like that, six and one fourth. Um, this right here, we already said that that as decimal would be 2.12. I don't know why I'm going backwards, but that's what we're doing here. Um, but you could write that as a mixed number. You could put two and how you convert a decimal into a fraction. It's based on how you say it in place value. This is 12 hundredths. So 12 hundredths. Okay, so that's a mixed number. This is a mixed number where we have a part and a whole. Um, here we have 11. 11 can go into that nine times. It would be 99 with a remainder of one over 11. And then this negative... Uh, six and 41 hundredths would be negative six and 41 hundredths, 41 over 100. And we could simplify these fractions, but these are all mixed numbers, some type of combination of part and whole. So that's why they're mixed. All right. Um, so that further example of, of another type of group. Um, let's go to move on to two or 520. All right. So on uh, last page that we're going to do, which is um, talk the talk and match them up. Match each group of numbers with the appropriate group name. We'll go through this a little bit faster. <clears throat> okay, so we have on the right side some group names. We have negative, integers, improper fractions, um, and numbers between negative 1 and, and 1. So what do we think this one is? I think that this is C, improper fractions. Improper fraction, that's where we have a number that's bigger on the numerator compared to the number on the denominator. So that's an improper fraction right there. That's an improper fraction right there. These other ones could be an improper fraction, right? This uh, 1.5, that's equal to 3 over 2. Right? If you divide 3, three by 2, you, it goes into a once with a remainder of a half. Um, this right here... You can write this as an improper fraction, right? It's based on its place value. So negative 212 and 2 tenths. We could write that on the bottom, right? Tenths. And this would be negative 2, 1, 2, 2. If you divide that, you would get that decimal. And similarly for the other fraction as well. Okay. Anyways, that one's down. 
Number two, what do they all have in common? They are all A negative. Okay, not too much explanation there. And then we have integers and numbers between negative one and one. Um, I'm just gonna describe integers though. This is like a number line. All the numbers on a number line, like this, negative one, negative zero, or negative, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And it continues in both directions. That's what it means to be an integer, positive and negative whole numbers, including zero. Um, this number three are um, D, numbers between negative one and one. And the last one is B, these are whole numbers, or sorry, integers, right? So we can tell that this one's an integer, that one's an integer, that one's an integer, this one, that one. But let's say about these other ones though, right? 10 squared, 10 squared is 10 times 10, which is 100. Five cubed or five to the third power. That means five times five times five, or five times five is 25, and five times 25 is 125. Yep, that's a, a positive integer. Anyways. Um, so that's pretty much it. Not so much computation, maybe converting between fractions, decimals, and percents, but besides that, things that I think we're familiar with, we're going to skip. We did not do the card activity. Oops. Um, we're, this is a blank page. Our assignment on page 523 is numbers one, all parts, and number two, all parts. And number two on the back side, you're just graphing uh, where you think these numbers are on the number line. Um, like for pi on this one, pi is approximately equal to 3.14. So where do you think 3.14 is on this graph? Okay. All right, anyways, let me know if you have any questions.